In Module 12, we will discuss the submittal and documentation requirements for the payment design package. This information can also be found in Appendix B of the Rigid Payment Design Manual. Let's start looking at the minimum requirements outlined in Appendix B.4.1. This provides a list of all items needed for putting together a rigid payment design package. We can begin by looking at the information needed in the payment design summary sheets. For the payment design summary sheets, you can follow the same format already shown in the flexible payment design training. It's a concise way of presenting all the information that was used to develop the payment design. Each one of these sheets will need to be signed and sealed by the payment design engineer preparing the report, and then the district design engineer will need to sign their concurrence on each sheet too. If your project is a federal aid project, you'll also need to get federal highways concurrence on each sheet. If you're digitally signing and sealing the document, the signatures can be shown in the cover of the report. As part of the design summary sheets, the minimum required information should reflect the following. Project information includes the state road number, mile post begin and end limits, FPID, name of the payment engineer that prepare the report, type of work, county, date of the report was prepared, ESOL D, data, opening and design years, truck percentage, resilient modulus, percent of reliability, design speed, slab thickness, shoulder, and edge drain information. This is an example from a District 2 uh, design report format. Here is an example showing the digital signature sign and seal document format. For this example, instead of signing and sealing each individual summary sheet, the requirement is to only include all the electronic signatures on the project cover sheet for the report. It will follow the same guidelines for the approval sheet process already outlined in slide three. The payment report cover to be signed and sealed by the design payment design engineer preparing the report. And then the district engineer will then need to sign their concurrence. And the project has federal aid, then it needs to be signed by Federal Highway for concurrence on the cover. Um, this is just an example of some of those signatures. Payment report should have a good description of the work being done, project limits with a location as shown in this slide. This example provides a greater detail with a map and it included information for two projects that were goes with. However, a simpler format is also okay as long as the minimum information is provided. When you construct reports, the report needs to include resilient modulus data. It should also include important standard inputs already discussed in Module 3. Also, if any material properties proposed to be used are different than those in the design manual, then detailed design notes will need to address the need for those changes. Some additional required information to include in the report includes any details from concrete rehabilitation if needed and lane widening details. Existing pavement layers include as-built information, pavement coring, and evaluation reports. Any drainage recommendations and details on where to place edge drains. ESLD calculations are important as well. This information is usually provided and certified by the planning office Make sure the data has been prepared for rigid pavements. Include required slab thickness data calculations. Some additional details that will need to be included in the report are any special features such as drainage considerations, stage construction, concrete pavement next to walls for footing details, any approach slabs or pavement transitions provide sketches of construction sequence, widening, and shoulders. The report should also have include drawings of rigid payment 
typical section with a narrative, include any joint details for areas where geometric changes occur, such as intersections and ramps. Central Office approval of the payment design is not required. Designs will be monitored and periodically reviewed in detail for quality assurance and for purposes of identifying and improving efficiencies in design policies, procedures, standards, and guidelines. Payment reports are approved at the district level by the district design engineer. For federal aid projects which required oversight and design, two copies of the approved payment design summary sheets and one copy of the supporting documentation will be forwarded directly to the appropriate Federal Highway Administration engineer for um, FHWA concurrence. Only mainline or major elements of a project need formal Federal Highway uh, payment design approval. Details such as crossroads and shoulders will be handled as part of the plan's approval process. Do not send these copies to the central office for transmittal to Federal Highway. The district will deal directly with Federal Highway to resolve any questions. Central office payment management will be available for assistance if requested by the district or Federal Highway. The Federal Highway will return directly to the district one copy of the summary sheets with signatures denoting concurrence. This copy will be filed in the district project design file. Changes made subsequent to formal distribution will require a revised summary sheet that will be signed and sealed and filed for payment record in the project design file. Minor changes may be noted in type or ink on the original payment design summary sheet with the responsible EOR's initials and date of the change. Major changes may require a completely new summary sheet be prepared and processed, in which case it is important to document in the payment addendum a brief narrative for why the change is taking place. However, in all cases, a document describing how the payment design was developed should be prepared in sign and seal. Every attempt should be made to follow written procedures. Situations will occur where following the payment design procedure will result in a required slab thickness that cannot be met. This could occur when a design is required in a widening area. The payment de design engineer will have to exercise engineering judgment on what should be done in these cases. When this occurs, the payment design engineer is advised to document the project, make special note of the problem, and provide additional explanation as to how the recommended design was developed. Consultation with our other engineers, such as construction, drainage, and materials, is highly recommended and should be noted in the design file. The quality control process includes three main activities. First, checking and reviewing the payment design for compliance with policies, procedures, standard guidelines, and good engineering practice. Second, checking and reviewing the plans to ensure that the proof payment design are correctly incorporated into the plans. And third, properly document that the quality control process that was followed. As a minimum, the payment report will include the QC checklist filled out and signed by the reviewer or maintain a payment design quality control file maintained by financial ID number and will consist of a copy of sign and seal payment design summary sheets, a copy of the QC checklist signed by the QC engineer, similar to the one that I will be showing on the next slide, and are included in the Rigid Payment Design Manual, Appendix B, pages B6 and B7. The quality assurance process needs to be followed for every report to ensure the quality control process is being followed for all payment reports. The state payment design engineer will be responsible for conducting and coordinating all payment related QA activities with each district and the turnpike. A QA review for the district payment activities will generally be conducted annually. The following rigid pavement checklist needs to be included in every pavement report. This checklist outlines all the design steps needed to be included in the report 
and helps maintain consistency for all reports prepared for FDOT. This is an important step outlined in the Rigid Payment Design Manual, Appendix B, Section B5. The checklist includes basic project information at the top left, followed by a detailed list of items that must be provided as part of the pavement report. The general requirements for all reports include payment design summary sheets, project location and description, traffic easel D calculations, resilient modulus, required slab thickness calculations, drainage evaluation, shoulder design, coordination with other offices, and other special detail and final payment design drawings or narrative. For rehabilitation projects, the report should also include field evaluations of the project pavement coring and evaluation to verify slab thickness and distress evaluation for all slabs. For projects that do not require calculations, include existing pavement evaluation and structural evaluation. For plans reviews, the plans need to conform to the pavement design, dimensions, station limits, etc. Include design details that adequately cover the work and ensure the project is constructible using current technology. This checklist needs to be signed at the bottom and dated by an independent reviewer different from the person that prepared the report, preferably the QC reviewer for consistency. This concludes Module 12, Rigid Payment Design Package.